Will is out of Denver, Colorado. He's been an agent for six years and closes a casual 200 million in volume annually. But today we're digging into his 200,000 followers on Instagram and over 10,000 subs on YouTube. So Will. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, talk and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it, all tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to the Agent Gold Mine, and today we have Will Grimes in the house. He is a prior service Marine turned real estate agent, YouTuber, public speaker, leader, all of the things. And today we are going to dive deep into how to grow an online brand, talk a lot about Instagram and YouTube, and then hopefully dig in a little bit to multiple streams of income through real estate. Will is out of Denver, Colorado. He's been an agent for six years and closes a casual 200 million in volume annually. But today we're digging into his 200,000 followers on Instagram and over 10,000 subs on YouTube. So Will, thank you for being here with us today. Super fun. And I had a great time with your real estate rock stars, correct? Yes. Sir. Podcast, which is amazing. And that goes over a lot of my story, right? So we'll We'll, we'll save that for everybody. If they haven't heard that, they can just go back and listen to that one. And it's probably painful. So they can they can listen to it. But <laughs> uh, super excited to talk about it. I'm glad you mentioned how many subscribers we have on YouTube. Because when we dive into it today, YouTube is such a different demographic as far as... Not different demographic, but different platform as far as what it takes to be successful on YouTube and what that looks like, right? So on our YouTube channel, we've got just over 10,000 subscribers. But that channel makes multiple seven figures a year. My Instagram does not. But my Instagram is at 200,000 followers, right? So super different with how business is created from the both, but super excited to teach you today. And thank you for coming on the show, Will. I know that you have shared your story and so people can check that out literally anywhere else. But I do want to ask one background question, which is because you're you're like a tough guy, you're prior Marine, you know, you're, you're a killing it in real estate and killing it on social media. So what, what would you say are just the things that shaped you to be who you are now? I thought I was tough until Shelby just handed it to me a couple of weeks ago in her podcast. She just right. demoralized me, right? She just, <laughs> she's such a hard charger, man. So one thing I teach on a lot is my insecurities, my not knowing how to do things. So, you know, one of my big stories that I talk a lot about is not knowing how to shoot a rifle until boot camp. We talked about that on the podcast and we talked about, you know, how nervous I was in boot camp. I ended up being a high shooter at a boot camp. I was a distinguished shooter. I was the lead counter sniper instructor at division schools on my way out. Like I was about as accomplished as a shooter as you could get on my way out of the Marine Corps. Yet when I was coming into the Marine Corps, I'd never shot, you know, and, and I had a drone instructor that was talking to me in that moment. And I was nervous and they're kind of like trying to be nice to also kind of calling you because you look nervous. Right. And he's just like, what's your, what's your deal? What are you acting so nervous for? And I said, I've never shot. And like a lot of these guys here, they grew up shooting with their dads, hunting and, and my drill instructor leaned down. And he goes, hey, man, you've got no bad habits. He goes, do what I say, when I say, how I say it, to the best of your ability, and you're going to crush. I love guys like you. And it was such a paradigm shift as far as, oh, I actually have the upper hand because I don't have to undo any bad habits that somebody taught me growing up. I can just, I don't know how to do it wrong. I'm only going to know how to do it, how you tell me how to do it. And I, I was like, I'm actually, I actually have the advantage. And that was one of the first times I had a real paradigm shift, like real moment of just, oh man, you know, and we always talk perspective and everyone knows, Hey, it's all about how you see it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like specifically, unless somebody is a deliverable of a message for you, that's, that's that powerful. You don't necessarily even, you're not even capable of seeing it differently in a moment. Right. So that speaks how important your circle is and somebody to just come through and give that teachable that completely just changes a game for you and how, and how much, you know, you can accomplish. So, you know, if, if I, if I'm big and tough and, and confident or something like, it's really just a product of hard work and being honest about insecurities and, and putting an immense amount of work ethic into something, knowing that you can still be brand new and nervous and insecure and it's probably the best thing that'll ever happen to you because as long as your circle and your people and your support around you are, are adequate and capable and invested in you, 
man, you're probably going to come out on top, right? So it's probably that long-winded. And, you know, my mom, I talk about my mom a lot. Uh, she passed away just this past year, but my biggest fan, you know, like no matter what I was doing, like I remember when I started real estate, man, dude, I, I built that. I helped my buddy build that fitness company and I was making decent money. I was not good with money. So I had 36 bucks after leaving that company. And, okay, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to, it's, it's my turn now. Jesus, criminy, right? Like we had to go to some wedding in California. So I spent two grand on that. And, and I didn't know how much my bills were. I, I had no idea that I had like 10 grand in the bank when I left. And that was gone in like a month, month and a half. And it was like, oh crap. So I had to get rid of my apartment, car. I mean, everything. And I was sleeping in my buddy's mom's pantry and I had no car. Right. And so my, you know, this is the number one thing I would love when my mom would tell me this when I would tell her whatever situation I'm in, because I know she's got my back. She would go, all right, just don't tell your father. <laughs> right? Cause my, cause what she had to do was I had to trade in the last car I had that I couldn't afford. Of course it was upside down in equity. You know, I have no income at this point because I've left that world of fitness and, and whatnot. And, and this was after the Marine Corps, after police work, I helped a buddy build a fitness company. And then I, I'm doing my own. And so she signs for this car by herself. And she's, are you good? You got it? And I was like, mom, I'll work on the corner and figure it out before I don't, you know, make this payment. And she's like, all right, well, don't tell your father, you know, and holy cow, you know, like my mom, three-time Olympian, played music for Columbia Records. But when she had kids, man, it was like, that was like, she took that same competitive nature she had in life she was that competitive and dedicated to raising her kids. And it really did me a service, you know? So I'm a product, I'm a product of a mother first and foremost, I think is, is what's, what's most important. Yeah. I love that. Cause, okay. So you started off that story with you being so green in the military, not knowing how to shoot, but because of the no bad habits, you can, you know, you don't have an, you don't have to rewind and reinstall any new habits, but with your money background, you did have bad habits. And so you're a product of both learning, like when you're brand new, but also rewinding your own financial, you know, history and 100%. starting, starting again. So what I want to translate this or, or switch this toward social media now. So with those that maybe do have bad habits or are just green, too scared to post, cause that's a lot of agents. What would you, what would you start off with saying when, you know, if the goal is to make a, as many millions as you're making in GCI? Your story, you know, and I'm glad you asked that because if you guys go to my Instagram, will underscore Grimes, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see me doing Uber and Lyft. So when I left that fitness company, I dedicated to just, you know, starting something for myself. You know, most people are so eager to make money, but very little people are willing to give up things. I gave up my apartment. I gave up my cars. I gave it. And this is also just a product being the Marine Corps. I slept on, I slept in the worst situations you can think of. Right. So getting rid of these possessions were no problem because what I wanted to build for myself mattered enough. I got rid of everything and I'm sleeping in this pantry. It's a literal pantry, like a old Y2K pantry when they thought the world, the, the original toilet paper, freak out at the grocery store where they're grabbing all the toilet paper and water, right? Because computers were going to go to two zero 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 and the world was going to yeah. end, right? And I've got some photos of it. I'll have to show you guys. But when I was in that pantry, it was like, man, like I've been here before. I've been under pressure. I understand like what that takes. I understand how to focus. And I had to just get rid of distraction. So I had to get rid of every bill known to man in order to just focus and, and get my license. And then once I started getting into real estate, I didn't want to sell desperate. I didn't want to have stuff to pay for. So now I'm trying to convince people to buy something because I'm pressuring myself over my own bills. So when I started that, this is when I started my own personal Instagram. I did not have my own personal when I was with that fitness company. I was, I was helping theirs. It was called Fit Republic. Great company. I was running their, their, their social media. So I didn't have my own personal. So when I started my personal, <clears throat> man, shout out to Gary V right? And just Andy Frisella talking about their truths, right? Like when Andy Frisella talked about sleeping on a cot in, in the back of his supplement store for seven years or something crazy, right? So if you guys scroll to the bottom of my Instagram, you'll see me with a lift sticker on my car. The one I hadn't gotten rid of yet because I was still trying to hold on and pay for it doing lift. Didn't work. I had to get rid of it. But I wanted to speak my truth and I wanted to let people know, hey, don't be romantic how you make your money. Do what you have to do 
in order to do what you want to do. So I would wake up in the morning and I would work out and get my mind and get my body right. I would study all day. At the end of the day, when I was tapped out from studying, I would go do Uber and Lyft to just make a buck. But it was important to show that, right? Because as I've transcended through some growth these past six years, you know, like when people talk about haters and this and that and, you know, all that jazz on social and I don't have a lot of them. And if I do, I don't hear about them. But I've been speaking my truth for so long. It's almost like you just got this fan base that are just rooting for you, you know, because they know who you are, right? If I'm just going to go, you know, get the lights all perfect and sit in front of my camera and here are the three things you should know before starting real estate. I could have said that. I could have done that. And it would have been really true because I, I probably started it about as raw as you can start it. The problem is, I'm just creating this topic of discussion and I'm creating this, this false conversation with my camera to, to look or feel a certain way to an audience. And there's something like there's a sixth sense people know. And they just can't, they can't tell me apart from any from the next guy creating some some topic of discussion. So I got really good at understanding how to capture content. And that's what are you really out there doing? What is your day actually looking like? And what are you doing? You know what I was doing? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. I got really good at understanding how to capture content. And that's what are you really out there doing? What is your day actually looking like? And what are you doing? You know what I was doing? I was doing lift at two in the morning. So you know what I was making video on? Just telling people and hey, Whatever it takes and it's okay, but I was actually showing myself in that moment. I wasn't some rich guy talking about six years ago when I did it for myself. I was actually like at the bottom in it telling people it's okay, right? And like that now, it, it, it serves so well because it gives people permission to do the same, right? Because once you start making it, the hardest part for me when I coach folks, right? And shout out to Shelby. I've got a couple of folks that want me to coach them from her podcast. We've got folks interested in our YouTube course from that. So I love that. But one of the biggest things I have to do is I got to get them to relate to where they're at now. And I get I got to get them to start at where they're at. They keep seeing what, what, what I'm doing. And it's really hard for them to like, hey, but you're here. We got to get you started, right? It's, it's almost like when somebody looks at a bodybuilder in the gym and it motivates them and then they go to do their workouts, but you're not there, right? You're at day one. So it's going to feel and look different, but it's because you can't see that bodybuilder when he first started 10 years ago, you don't realize you're in the exact same spot he was because you can't see it. Right. So when you're starting out on social media, when you're starting out in real estate, whatever it may be, like, even if you've been around for a long time and you've been doing social media for a while and you're wondering why it's stagnant, it's because you probably haven't told your story and you probably haven't documented and started capturing the truth behind everything it is that we do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So th this is something I need to do also while you're speaking to me, because I know that there's nothing more compelling than seeing what someone's actually going through, because you can go to these educational places and get the how to's and the step by steps. But what people really want once they're engaged in following Will Grimes, the brand is they want to know what you're actually doing in your day to day and feeling your highs and your lows and taking them on a journey. So ugh, cool. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's what makes people partial to you. Like, why do you, you know, like, why do you relate to some, to someone, whether it's Aaron Rodgers or whoever, right? Because they're going through or have gone through something similar to you or like the, the relation with folks is never this polka dot shirt or this watch. It's a story, right? It's, it's, oh man, I can relate to Will because of A, B, and C, right? And they latch onto that and it allows them to be, to be empowered themselves, right? So you have to. And again, Shelby, like who's going to know you from the next person spitting out little tidbits or, or, or gold nuggets that you're giving. And it's not that those aren't important. It's that we got to make sure people know who we are. So when we are giving some of that, well, we've got them, we've got them with us. They're already open for whatever we want to give them. Typically we're just giving them, but we haven't really allowed our, allowed ourselves to be vulnerable enough to have them attached to us. Well, I'm going to get known for being the one to just fight you on the internet on all of the <laughs> podcasts. And that's like the Shelby brand is like all good. right here. <laughs> all good. All good. Okay, 
Question though. So that makes sense. In the beginning, you are sharing your story. You're having people come along for the ride. Ali and I are both curious about YouTube. So at what point did you transfer? I know you're doing both still. So like when did YouTube start and how did it start for you? Yeah, we started three, three and a half years ago. You know, our good friends, Jesse and Jackson, the guys that we just decided to join in real estate, they were, they were doing great at it. You know, and like I was crushing Facebook, I was crushing Instagram and Instagram is more of a public journal for me. And because I've got a special operation background and there's some romantics behind that, Instagram's always been able to be a relationship thing for me, not a real estate thing, but indirectly it's real estate because of the relationships I've gained from it. Right. But Facebook, I was hard, I was hard in the paint with real estate and creating content there professionally and, and everything that was gaining. And I was on a, I was on a Greg McDaniel podcast, real estate uncensored. Good dude. Right. And uh, he's, Hey, I just had this guy on my podcast. I think he'd be good for your guys' podcast, which is ours day one dollar zero, which Shelby will be on soon. And I'm going to do my best to make you cry and pull out so much of your past. It's going to be amazing. Right. So be, be prepped for that. Can't wait. So we had Jackson on and then Jackson was on our podcast and he's, you know, he's spitting game about YouTube and how it works. And because Elon and I, my partner, my business partner, because we were in it and we had our finger on the pulse and we were paying attention to content. When he started talking about what they were doing on YouTube, it translated to us. Like we were, we were like, Hey, that's something. And it wasn't a big deal at the time, but you guys know, right? Like when you're, if you're an athlete or if you're a coach and you're watching athletes all day and you see somebody that's got something, but maybe he's not scoring all the touchdowns yet and he's not quite known, but you're so embedded in paying attention to certain skill sets, you're like, dude, that man, that guy, that guy. And then before you know it, you pick him and you make him a star in your team. No different than when I'm paying attention to content at scale through social and behaviors and patterns. When Jackson starts talking YouTube language, I'm like, dude, that's something. And we had a meeting after that podcast and he's, you guys would absolutely crush, you know, and and we took their framework as far as what they executed on. And over time, we started adding our own additional things that we were great at to it. But, but the framework and the foundation was set from just networking. But this is, again, this is because we're going to get back to podcasting when you ask me how I grew my social media, but just being involved and being around people that are doing great things when a moment hits or when there's an opportunity, like you're that much more likely to strike when you're embedded in it versus, you know, you go do your deal or you make your 10 calls and then you're, you're, the rest of your day is escapism watching Survivor or The Last Dance or whatever you want on, on Netflix. I'm not. I'm wa- I was watching a dude's channel. I was listening to my own podcast again because I wanted to hear what he had to say even more so. And, you know, like when you start getting obsessive and neurotic about it in that manner you're that much more likely to see those pivots and those opportunities. And, and, you know, we cashed in on that and we started doing our channel right away. And that was just before COVID. When you say Jackson, is that Jackson Wilkie? hundred percent. Okay, cool. So starting off on YouTube, what were the first couple of videos that you did? Did you start a new channel or did you, I guess, even have one before? I never Um, had a YouTube channel. Would you recommend starting new? Okay. So it was like a brand new channel. You got to start new. It's yeah. a search, YouTube is a search engine. It's owned by Google. Everybody knows that now, right? So like it's, there's no guesswork. So it's got to be organic. I also don't share my YouTube on my Instagram or my Facebook, right? That algorithm needs to be organic to putting it in front of people that are showing consistent behaviors on their phone that would be consistent with watching your videos. And you got to let YouTube do its thing and run its play. And it's, it's not so much the first couple of videos that we made. You know, like you guys can go look at our channel living in Denver or living in Houston with Jackson. You guys can go pull the first 25 titles in five minutes by just seeing someone's channel. It's not that. It's who we are on camera. It's if I'm going to talk about, you know, hypothetically, let's say, you know, the, you know, Denver, Colorado, the top three neighborhoods you don't know about. Cool. What makes them watch mine versus somebody else that just stole my title? Your personality but people, but it's my truth again, though, Shelby. It's not my personality. It's like when I'm talking school districts and I'm and, and we're and we're giving information on, on school districts, I'm also mentioning, hey guys, uh, we've talked about school districts before. We're gonna talk about it again. I'm a father of three. I care about where my kids go to. If you're watching this, I'm guessing you care about where your kids go. If you don't have kids, please understand how much a school district affects your resellability. So hey, we're gonna talk about them in this video as well. People get to find out I'm a father. When we're talking other stuff, people find out I was a police officer. People find out I'm a veteran. I'm me. 
on these videos. Like I, like I find ways to tell my story within the content. I find ways to, to make sure that I'm relating to the content that I'm teaching on a video. I'm, I'm me and I got to be me and I got to speak my truth while also being very informative and giving and giving different perspectives from different websites and things like that. But it's me. It's a, there's a command presence there. There's a personability there when you're speaking your truth through that. So it's that and it's we've never missed a f- video in three and a half years. I can't tell you how many times I've taught people and they're, you know, they're, they're start. Hey, two videos a week. Here's a formula. Here's what you guys should be doing. And on the second week, they're already missing a video. You can't expect it to perform if you're not performing, right? Somebody said it best. If you treat it like a hobby, it'll pay like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, it'll pay like a business. And so it's, it's who we decide to be. It's who we are on camera that makes people watch. For example, take the news, for example. We all used to watch the news probably years ago. Why did you watch one channel over the other? They're going to say the same. <laughs> for whatever reason, you liked that weather lady or weatherman or you like that sportscaster or that main guy, you know, that, that just did a great job. And you, you just liked his temperament over the net. The contents, the stories are the story, man. The contents, the content, right? It was who was behind the camera. And this is what people don't put enough thought into. They think they can just make titles and, and, and be consistent or make, but then it doesn't work. Look at, look at pitchers, right? Like why, like why are there better pitchers in baseball than others? There's only so many pitches you can throw, but when you throw it, how you throw it, why you throw it, who you are up there when you're throwing it, it's like, there's not enough it factor here that people are, they, they think in real estate, we have, let me, I'm long-winded in real estate. We have this problem. You think you can get on something and you, and then you're expecting yourself to win at the highest level, like everybody else. Right. But if I give you a baseball glove, you would never expect yourself to be a pro baseball player. It wouldn't even be a thought, but I give you Instagram. I give you YouTube. And then you think you're supposed to be these guys that are at the top of the top of the top. And it's maybe, Maybe, and you're probably more likely to be at the top of that than baseball, but where's your work ethic? Where's the detail? Where's your personability? Where's the talent factor in addition to the hard work that comes through? Like you're, you're, you're absent of all of it, yet you have this expectation that you're going to be this top producer because, okay, YouTube's a thing now. All right, I'm going to get on YouTube and then ah, it's not working. Dude, it's and so I'm, true. It's, across, it's across the board. It's like YouTube, but also anything, everything takes so much more time and energy. Like I still, to this day, I'm like, oh, I have this one thing on my to-do list. Like I'll block 30 minutes to do it. It takes an hour and a half. No fail. It always takes three times as long as I think it is. But for you, you've been doing YouTube for a while and crushing it. And you talked about how all these people, you know, want to do it and they fall off. Like from you doing it personally, what do you feel is the hardest part? Because I'm sure you've had days where you almost didn't make it or you what? What is the hardest part to you? What's the alternative? Not doing it? Oh, like, are what's you asking me? I thought that was rhetorical. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, like, what's the alternative? I was like, on the edge of my seat, dude. I was it's like, <laughs> Dude, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple, right? Like this podcast you girls are doing. Take your production and, and everything you girls are doing to create production real estate. What's the alternative? Not doing it, quitting. Yeah. And then, so, okay, walk me through. What does that look like? Not happening. Ooh. But seriously, but yeah. but think about it, yeah. right? Okay. Let me just walk through not doing real estate right now. Or, or because a lot of the public speaking, I get paid to go speak on stages and all this jazz. But why? Because of the credibility I've built within real estate and with coaching. But my, a lot of my credibility in coaching isn't just because I was in special operations. It's because I went from that world, became a civilian, built something in this world to prove that this mindset correlates and is congruent with civilian world, but it's all on the bedrock of my success within real estate, right? So, okay. So I just got to, all right, I'm just not going to do it anymore. Okay. What am I going to go do? Okay. What start over and do what? To try to even think of what that would look like is significantly more painful than just the shit I'm going to go do today, right? So maybe for them, what the alternative is not painful enough, <laughs> you know, because they're finding alternatives to do. They're not following through with what, you know, they said that they let wanted me be, to do. Let me be super unpopular to a lot and very oh popular God. to very few. Yes. Yes. We're ready. What if I told you I don't want everyone to make it? What if I told you that because I understand from 
pro baseball to special operations to mercenary work to police work, whatever, whatever accolade you can stack on my table. Let's just say I have a relationship with hard work, commitment, sacrifice, and some not so good days. Okay. Those willing, I cannot wait for you because how you'll feel and what you've earned won't even require a word. It can just be a look from me to that person, right? Two baseball players just went at it the other day. I think it was Cabrera and it was another pitcher from Houston. For those of you non-baseball players, these are two guys, an amazing hitter, Hall of Famer, an amazing pitcher, soon to be Hall of Famer. When these guys, when these guys retire, they will be first ballot Hall of Famers. They've been going toe-to-toe for 16 years in baseball, pitcher versus hitter. I'm pretty sure they just had one of their, maybe potentially their last at bat against each other ever, because I think one of them is retiring this year or they both are. And this was the last series, the last game of the last year they were playing each other. Do you know the interaction they had? They looked at each other and they went like this. Because between those two guys, I don't think there is anything that just needs to be said. So the conversation, the language amongst winners is more emotional, can be more silent than explanatory. And if you're not willing to commit and sacrifice and go through hardship and miss birthdays or have a bad day or have a video, that's okay. But I also don't think that you should reap a benefit or earn or, or, or have or receive what a lot have, have sacrificed to earn. I just don't think you belong in the winner's circle. I'm not the every, everybody gets a trophy guy, right? So everything we're talking about, I'm not here to convince you that you should do the same. I'm just going to tell you my truth and how I got there. And then if that's not for you, that is so okay. Because maybe there's another industry where you are more willing to sacrifice because it does feel more like you and you are, you know, more embedded. Great. But if you're not in it, it just, it's, I, I'm not going to hand it to you. And and that's why they end up not even ever getting to the winner's circle, whether you think that they belong there or not, right? It's like, good, right? Because it's, hey, man, when they started saying, oh, 60,000 realtors have got out, out of the market in the last 90 days. Good. Good, man. It's, hey, because that should tell you something, man. Like, you're not the weakest link. You're still here. You're still trying. Will, I'm taking L's. You're in the game perspective. You're watching this podcast right now. You're seeking more. You're in the game, dude. Good. Like while all these other guys were breaking, you didn't, right? And I've got, hey, stack a win. One more day. One more win, right? Like it adds up. But if people can't find that within themselves, having somebody or something fast track it or relieve the pressure or relieve the pain, that's not a fix, right? And what people have to understand is like when you're in that moment, it's building the person you need to be. For example, who I am now six years later, when I'm in this pantry, broke, right? Ego, masculinity, financially, whatever you want to call it, right? If you would have given me everything I have right now, and you're like, Will, you are a veteran, and man, like you deserve a break, and here, come run this company. I would have killed everybody. <laughs> like I wasn't... I wasn't poised. I wasn't, I didn't have the context. I didn't have the contextual experience to make judgment calls and decisions for people or what we're doing, right? So like those moments of sacrifice and hardship and being humbled and deciding that quitting was taken off the table a long time ago. So it's just not an option. But those pressing times have created the guy that I am now, but I have to be this guy right now to even run what we're doing. And now I got to be even more to run what we're doing next. So it's even if you could fast track it or just get a cheat code and have it given to you, you'll run it right into the ground because you're, you're just not the person you need to be that will be required to, to run, to run this big thing that you hope happens, you know, overnight. And for the folks that are still here, I'm I'm team practitioner, man. I'm like, we still run our deals along with everything else that we're doing, right? I'm like, like Braveheart or Robin Hood, man. I'm like, I'm for the people, man. And the people are the realtors that are out grinding. And when you see people quit, it's not because I wish them any, any ill or bad harm, but it's because, hey man, 
there should be a standard in this industry. There just should be. Anything that's excellent, anything that's professional that requires us to be proficient at helping people at the most expensive sales and buys of their life should have a standard. But you can't say there's a standard if you don't have anybody fall off. So it's just a great key indicator that we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna lessen the herd, right? We're gonna, we're gonna lessen the herd and make sure that who's left is is proficient. And yes, I understand a lot of them are gonna come back when the industry starts booming again or whatever, but let's get back to brand. If you understand your moment right now, even if it's not as many transactions, if you're a professional and if you're a leader, right? You're going to understand the momentum you can build right now and establish yourself as an authority figure in this industry. So as it does start to come back, who are people going to? The people that they've seen in it day in and day out consistently versus these ones that are going to try to jump back in when interest rates drop and there's more buyers and we're not far away from it, right? Like people will see the ones that double dutch. If you establish yourself now, you will be so forged when this smart, when this real estate thing comes back to where we all want it to be. You'll be so forged with your brand, but this is how they're built. Yeah. Cool. I have another question too. So, okay. When you mentioned Gary, Gary Keller, our, our, you know, next door neighbor, a good family friend comes over for dinner. Just kidding. So he talks a lot about <laughs> the one thing, of course. Right. And I know that you've built this amazing brand on Instagram. You have YouTube. You mentioned earlier, you're still working with clients, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Correct. And I know that you also have coaching and you have some agent attraction type of stuff, but I'm curious about the allocation of your focus. Do you feel like you are heavily focused in one area more than the others? Or do you think you're like split? Like, where's your time going? Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. Tag us. We'll reshare that. Real estate. I know, but this is where people mistake the one thing. People think it's one thing. It's okay. Steak. No. Being a chef. That's your thing. Like the one thing is still broad. It's just, a, it's just a mile deep. So sometimes we like, in my impression, we, we misinterpret the one thing. My one thing right now is real estate, right? So whether it's, and we have buyer agents that help with showings and things like that when things are busy. We have decentralized command and Eli, my business partner, has his roles with discovery calls and Zoom calls for buyer presentations. And I've got my role. So I don't have to do every single thing, right? So between production and content creation and agent attraction and investments and our online YouTube course and coaching, everything coincides with real estate. And you mentioned so if you're not a lender or a realtor, I'm not coaching you right now, right? I've, I've coached professional athletes. I've done some fun mind stuff there. I've helped a lot. That's really romantic for the resume to coach a pro athlete, but it takes away and it's distracting from being productive within real estate. And I'm curious about your specific lane. So like Eli does discovery calls, Zoom presentations, stuff like that. What is the Will Grimes portion? Yeah. So very heavy with listings. So just advising clients and being in person for a listing presentation and figuring out strategically how we're going to market this home, not just on the MLS or Zillow, paid marketing campaigns like our YouTube channel with how many buyers we have. Last year, we did 140 buy sides from YouTube alone and all of them were out of state. So we have a lot of data on where people are coming from to Colorado. So guess what I get to tell the seller? Right, based off of like where their price points at and, and where their city's at, like you can kind of tell like the pattern. So when you put out marketing campaigns for homes, like you have way more understanding of like how you need to market that, where you need to market it in order to get it in front of people that that have that need to see it, right? Cause and hey, Zillow's great, but if I'm moving to California, where am I moving to? San Diego? LA? How big are those? And I don't care if I'm in Irvine Spectrum or San Clemente. Do I? Do you know similar though? Same thing like with here in Colorado. Do you know similar Castle Rock, Parker, Southeast Aurora, Highlands Ranch, and Littleton are? But if you don't know anything about Southeast Aurora and you're not even looking at home. So, okay, you have Zillow and you're looking at Zillow and you're, you live in Pittsburgh and you're moving to Denver and you're looking at Highlands Ranch because your, your brother-in-law lives there. 
You're not even looking across the highway at Southeast Aurora that has better bang for buck homes, has the same commute into the city because you're just unfamiliar. So you're not even looking. But once you get to our channel and we're educating and going over maps and just bringing more, more value there. And then once you're here in person, we're showing it to you. Do you know how many people actually move to Southeast Aurora over Highlands Ranch when they get to Colorado? Eight out of 10. But knowing that when I'm selling a home, if I'm selling a home in Castle Rock, I'm not just looking at the comps in the neighborhood. I know that these neighboring cities are my competition because at least half the homes potentially are being sold to someone from out of state. And they don't care whether it's Southeast Aurora, Parker, Littleton, like they're looking for school districts, commute to work, viability as far as bang for buck, what you get for a home, atmospherics of what it looks like when it's there. But these are all so similar. I already know once they get their eyes on it, it's going to change things. So people that are looking in certain areas, could I still market this home in Castle Rock to folks that are looking for other areas? 100%. So strategy I'm huge on. I'm also huge on the strategy side for buyers. And then if Eli needs me for any negotiations for contracts or, you know, once we're under contract for inspections, we tend to collaborate and do pretty well there. Between your Instagram and your YouTube, how, so obviously YouTube is for clients, right? It's, Hey, this is what it's like living in, in Denver, moving to Denver for Instagram, being that you don't post your YouTube stuff on your Instagram, cause you want it to be an organic reach only from those serious buyers and sellers. How do you convert or do you convert? How, how are the Instagram followers? What kind of value, I guess, do you give them? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. How, how are the Instagram followers? What kind of value, I guess, do you give them? Me. Yeah. You know, between Facebook and being hard in the paint on real estate and having a huge YouTube channel, like we are so heavy on so many platforms for real estate. You know, like between the couple hundred agents that are with us now, between agents that aren't even at our brokerage, that are just at other brokerages, between the people that followed me from the military, from police. Like when I was on Andy Frisella's podcast, I think I gained like 45,000, 65,000 followers just from being on his, right? That was huge for me. The best thing I can give people is me. Like I don't want to pigeonhole it to just realtors and here are the top three things you should be doing in a down market. It's not that that's not valuable. It's that I just think there's so much more behind what I do that's with me. And I just, I'm not, I'm not biased. I guess I don't steer people on my Instagram. I don't care if you're a realtor or not. If there's something I can do to help, whether it's perspective or mindset or motivation or documentation, whatever it is, if you guys go read my Instagram, if you go actually read the posts, it's a diary. It's a, it's a public journal, public diary that allows you to dive in read it in first person and then let it be whatever it needs to be for you. And I never answer questions for people, right? Like when people comment or, or I'll get a lot of DMs, you know, Hey, what, what did you mean by this? And well, Hey man, what did you take from it? I don't necessarily want to give you what I mean. Like I'm not trying to give you a narrative and force you to think or feel a certain way. What I want to do is I just want to speak my truth. And then I want you to be able to sit down and, and wherever you're at night, you're up, you can't sleep or wherever you are and you're reading it. I want you to be able to read it in first person and then just let that be and grow for you in whatever manner it needs to be. But I, I, that's my Instagram is my way of staying grounded and just not losing who I am for who I am. I'm a realtor. I'm a I'm a speaker. So now I got to go be that f everywhere. Instagram lets me still be me. Not just this, this thing, like I'm a, I'm like when you become a motivational speaker or whatever, right. And you become this real estate person, this, this, you know, influencer, I'm using quote fingers. If you guys are just listening on audio, we've seen people grow that way. And then guess what? They're just that all the time. I'm like, dude, come on, man. You woke up late today. I know it. Stop being stupid. Right. Or, yeah. <laughs> but it's because they've, they've portrayed something that created success. And now they're this thing. They're now just this, Hey, don't break character. You're just this person, this character. And I'm not saying that the character is bad. I'm not saying that it's fake. I'm saying that it's, it's one lens. It's one layer of who you are. 
in a lane of real estate or in a lane of public speaking that's very valuable, right? That's that's needed, right? Whoever played Superman, I don't think he like stayed in that character and wore the cape home and started talking to his wife at the dinner table that way. Weird, right? So it's whatever you need to be to be on stage and to get a point across or, or whenever you're speaking or teaching, like it, it is valuable. I think for me, Instagram is a human element. My mom died. I talked about it. I cried. There's a couple of times I cry on camera on there. And I, you know, not in like a dramatic way, you know, to get attention, but it's a delivery system, right? Like it's, there's a human element to it. It does feel good to process thought and then articulate. It feels better for me to just, to just write that. And then when I go through things like, yeah, how many times people have reached out because I had documented something that was challenging. And it's great because then when they reach out and thanking me for that, guess what? They also see me bounce back and stay consistent. So as much as they're relating to like the hard times, they're also not getting an excuse to stay there. Right. So I think if I'm answering the question, right, I think for me, especially now that I'm a coach and I coach people one-on-one, -on -one, like I like that my Instagram gives that human element of, Hey man, that's Will. That's just Will. Like whatever he's doing, wherever he's going, whatever he's thinking, Hey man, that's just that dude. And I love that people go there for that. 12 yeah. months from now, if you can project into the future, if you were looking back and thinking, wow, that was the best year ever, what happened? Like what goal did you hit? Whether it be like a business goal or whether it be like a personal, you know, growth type of thing. But what are you working on right now? I got no answer for you. Yeah. A year from now? Yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't think there'd ever be a culminating moment that like, I'll tell you this. I am most proud when my phone rings at 1030 at night and I'm there for somebody. Like just being of service and being useful. You know, like I don't need the, I don't need the public credibility. Uh, if you guys have known me for a little while or follow me, I don't celebrate a lot of stuff and it's, it's not because it doesn't matter. It's not. It's just that for some reason, man, like you won't get me to go to a lot of birthdays. I don't like one of my closest friends from the Marine Corps is getting married and I can't get out of it because it's in Aspen. So I, I have to go like, and I'm being funny with that one, but like, I feel poised. I feel like I do well shouldering things. I feel like I do well compartmentalizing and figuring out things that are, can just be really heavy and hard for folks and just be that light. My mom never got credit, never seeked it, never needed it. And boy, she was happy. So I almost feel like if I even try to seek public credibility or base 12 months of success off of a moment, that would be something for me. It could almost make me less happy because it would make, it would mean like I'm losing touch with why I'm doing it in the first place, you know, but I'll tell you that I feel most happy or, or at peace being in a place of service. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys have been good friends before, right? If someone's calling you at 11 o'clock at night, it's because they know you'll answer. It's not because they don't know it's late. You know, and those are cool. Or watching, watching single moms create a real estate career that makes them more money than they've ever made or even thought of making. But there's no culminating moment for it. So Shelby, it's a great question. I just think I'm like dysfunctional to an extent. You no, know, I like, think that was a good answer. I think you, you answered it well. So I just, I never knew you'd like, like for me, right? Like I never had a goal to start a YouTube channel. If you would ask me six months in real estate, Will, what's your three-year goal? I don't know. <laughs> but I also don't think that a lot of the greats do that. I don't know. The more of them that I'm meeting, the more I realize how well they are making pivots and having their finger on the pulse. And when they see something. So like for me, I've never been like, I guess the analogy I'll give you is like being a motorboat like a boat with a motor, an engine, right? You're going to go across the ocean A to B as quickly as possible. That's, I'm going to do 200 transactions a year. And then you're just right here on Zillow leads or calls or, or whatever to just hit this thing, right? I'd rather be a sailboat. Like I'd rather navigate the storms. I'd rather be paying attention to, hey, is Zillow even something that, should, that I should be around in 12 months? Hey, are there shifts there already? And maybe that's not, hey, maybe that was a really cool thing five years ago. And if you were in five years ago, baller. But if you're not, no, I should be able to see that storm coming. I should be able to see where there's a clear. I should be able to feel where the wind is on my back and I've got advantage, right? So it's in, it could be so much bigger than whatever goal you just gave yourself. It could be so much bigger. 
our YouTube channel, certain things like it's so much bigger than what I imagined. So I feel like when you're, when you're being better by the day and you're putting yourself around the right people and you're obsessed with your craft and just doing a great job, you're going to attract and be around the right people. You're going to see the right things. And YouTube was a pivot. Coaching folks, that was a, that was a Tim Grover and a Wes Watson conversation, right? That was a, why aren't you? Right. That was a, Hey, Will, do you know how many people you have following you on Instagram and how many realtors you have? And you don't even offer this one. Like, do you know how many people would love if you were their mentor, their coach, but because you don't offer it, it's not even a thing. Now that's a black and white. They give me a direct statement, but why was I on the phone with Wes in the first place? Right. It's he's not in real estate, but because like I'm paying attention to like certain guys doing things certain ways. And because I'm constantly trying to be open and absorb and just be a student of what's going on. I'm open to those conversations, which leads to something, which then leads to putting something into perspective. And so I feel like it's just hard to do that. And I feel like the folks that I've met that always just go so hard this way to do, man, I got to do 200 transactions in a year or I'm worthless because that's my goal. And it's, dude, it could be so much bigger. And if I were just stuck on that, I wouldn't have RevShare. I wouldn't have an online course. I wouldn't be a coach. I'd just be doing this thing, you know? And I guess we call that attack the hill. Right. Let's just educate ourselves on, on, on warfare for a minute. Right. This whole burn the ships and attack the hill, like kind of, but we also take a step back and envelop on the enemy at times too. When we're overran, we don't just attack the hill and commit suicide. We change directions. We call for air support. We have an adjacent unit come across and envelops. Like I'm getting long winded. I'm clearly passionate about this stuff, but we love the passion just- that comes right through. I mean, for example, what, what are you girls going to be doing in 12 months? Dude. Okay. This is actually, after I asked that question, I actually realized that I have been listening Alex Ramosi. I'm sure you listen to him too, where he talks about extending the time horizon and it's the, you know, the people who think on longer time horizons are generally the type of people that he wants to be around. So 12 months question. It's all about, you know, 20 years, dude, but we actually do have to wrap up and I have one question before we wrap sure. up. So we have 100%. this gold mine. The agentgoldmine.com is where we ask guests to submit a nugget to upload so that listeners who want to be like Will Grimes can have either a <laughs> cheat sheet or a checklist or some sort of email template product to upload. What you got? Anything. Be useful. Be useful. But in that in the energy of being useful, maybe like Eli has a checklist for new agents or like a checklist. Oh, you want something product. literal. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can throw a, no, we can throw a buyer prezo up there or we've got plenty of stuff. I'll make sure Eli get, for me, it's just going to be that. But if you really boil down like what it means to be useful and you're focused on that, yes. you know, day in and day out, like you're going to build something really cool. Like I know it sounds very metaphorical, but there's a lot of like simplicity to it. Because it needs to be. If it's overcomplicated, we're, we're not going to do it. But being useful, my opinion, and taking care of your mom, thats thats those Take are my care nuggets. Of your mom. 100%. Okay, you guys, if you want Will Grimes' surprise tool, probably a buyer presentation, it will be at theagentgoldmine.com for go there and get the nugget. Will, where can people who want to find you, of course, your links, everything's going to be in the show notes, but where do people go to find you? Will underscore Grimes. That's my Instagram. If you guys and and folks that saw me on the last podcast, they can contest to it. If you send me a message there, I will get back to you within 24 hours. That's just where I'm me. I've got links, you know, where you can find our courses and coaching and stuff, but I'm not really selling anything. If you want to go dive and find it, you can. But if you just want to connect, throw me a message there and, and I'll connect with you. Thank you so much for jumping on our show today, Will. It was a pleasure meeting you. I hope we stay in contact. And if you guys haven't already followed him during this podcast, go give him a follow. It, it is good. So, Will, thank you so Allie, much. Allie, you're so nice. We need, we need more time together, Allie, because Shelby's so hard on me all the time. So, like, we need we need more Allie. We I'm the nicest Allie. New Yorker you'll ever meet, Will. <laughs> Under, you're, you're a New Yorker? 100%. You. <laughs> yeah. Yankees fan all the way. So good. Will, thank you so much. If you guys have not given this a uh, podcast or rating, do so right now. Better be five stars. And that's it. Oh, that, my New Yorker came out. <laughs> thank you so much. We're also Allie, the agent on the Instagram and the Shelby show. 
on the gram. So be a bro and share this show. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.